sampling method. Sampling method also very important. Okay, there are two different type of sampling method: probability sampling and non-probability sampling. And uh, if I will give you an example, like okay, you want to collect the hemoglobin level. The same question: you want to collect the hemoglobin level, and someone what they did? Uh, they just start from one household and start collecting, and they want like fifty. Uh, samples from one from one first household they start and whenever they reach to the 50 okay they their sample collection is done and they are going to make an interpretation on the basis of that okay but someone will think no no there are like thousand households if we will start from one you will end up to maximum 60 70 till 70 households okay so you are completely ignore the remaining so then they think, okay, no, no, I will randomly choose from the thousand. So thousand, you want fifty. So thousand divided by fifty, okay, we'll go to the first and then tenth and then twentieth, something like that. So that result, if I will ask of you which result is better, you will say, oh, second one is better. Then someone become more smart. Okay, so the in out of the thousand household, this much is rural area. And this much is urban area. And urban area, let we'll say the urban area is 40%, rural area is 60%. How you can give the equal weightage? Okay, stratified them into the two groups. And then out of the first and out of the second, you choose randomly. Okay, so we are means we are trying to improve the quality of the selection of the sample. So there are different sampling method also at at this time point you just remember that there are two type of sampling method probability sampling non probability sampling probability sampling means you have a means a proper system to choose the sample non probability sampling basically depending on your convenience system and sometimes non probability sampling is good also like if you are going to work on some rare disease so in that case, rare disease, if you plan a systematic probability sampling method, okay, you just waste your energy. Like uh, I'm, inter I'm interested to do a uh, study on HIV. So we know that HIV in HIV patients, there are clustering. So rather than, and we also know that the prevalence is very low. Okay, if you reach up to 1000 people, maybe you will get two, three, four but you waste your energy on thousand. So rather than that, the best way is why not you follow the snowball sampling? Like, okay, we try to identify somewhere one. And if you are able to get one, then from that one, okay, you know anyone else? This is for your benefit. We are conducting this study. Then you explain everything. Then they will say, oh, I know this two. Then you reach to the two. And that two say, okay, we know this three. So it's easy for you to collect more information rather than the simple random sampling. So it depending on the situations also, okay? But sampling is also very important. Then after this all process, means you come up with an idea, go for the review of literature, make a you know, hypothesis, make your objective, define your outcome measures, define your study design, okay? Define your sampling method, Determine how much sample it's required. At the end, what you have, you have data. So till this stage, the major question may come from the process, which is step come first. Study design, most important thing, study design. Okay, because this is through this stage, you are also able to understand why it is important. Okay, so study design, it can come from the uh, cross-sectional, case control, cohort, and the idea what we get from here, the question may be just try to see. The question is not always straightforward. So try to understand the concept. If you understand the concept, it becomes easy for you. Whatever they try to, okay, Joel Mul Karenge, you are able to solve that. You have any question? Okay. So at the end, you get your data. And now, second most important things come. How to present your data. Okay. So, how to present your data means 
the two things. See, in statistics, in biostatistics, we have two problems. Okay, whenever we are dealing with the data, we have two problems. The first, in real life also, in real life also, like if I will ask you to define this person, and that person may be a variable here. So define a person, then what, what come in your mind? The first step is, what is he or she? And the second step is, how it is related with the others. So the personality and the behavior. These two things we, we only thought about. Huh? How it is personality and how it's behaving with the other people. Same thing in statistics also. Okay. So oh, where is that slide? So basically, I, I missed one slide in between. So basically in biostatistics, our main goal is the estimation means how to present a variable and the hypothesis testing, how to find the relationship between the variables. Okay, like descriptive study, you just want to present a variable. Analytical study, you want to see the relationship between the variables. Okay, so. <laughs>